Shalom, Hebrews and Hebrews. Welcome to the channel. This is Oilfield Disciple and our daily reading today of 1 Kings chapter 3 or chapter 4. I don't know why I am confusing these chapter numbers, but the last couple of videos I've seen I have done that. Um, I went back and fixed the one yesterday where I had it labeled 1 Kings chapter 2. It should have been 1 Kings chapter 3, which we actually read 3, but I had it labeled wrong. I guess I've just got a whole lot going on and on my mind and a whole lot of numbers and um, it happens. So I'm trying to fix it. Um, feel free to shoot me a, a comment saying, hey, this is labeled wrong. I don't mind that. Um, thanks, John Ishi, for your, your input on that. I think what we'll do, um, if, we, if I, I'll look and if we have um, an Old Testament and New Testament um, short chapters, We'll combine the two. Um, if not, we may. Um, I'll just have to. We'll just have to go from uh, day to day. Whether I make two videos or one video, um, and kind of just just play along um, here a little bit and see how it works out. Um, I do like the two video, two chapters in one video format uh, because it gives you a, a depth there um, that's why i like reading um, an old testament chapter with the new testament chapter um, in that reading plan i also posted that reading plan as a, as the uh, the thumbnail on yesterday's video um, you might go and large that and you can kind of look at that and that's kind of what i'm talking about with the uh, the 10 club reading three tests three old testament three new and three psalms and one proverb per day but anyway, um, we're going to start out with 1 Kings. This is a, kind of a short chapter, um, especially because it's just a, most of it is a lineage of names and um, prominence. And so we'll try to get through this one kind of quickly and then get over to 1 Corinthians um, chapter 3. And so this is 1 Kings chapter 4. Bible's out. Um, or look off into the distance. <coughs> Water towers old business uh business right there is one that i've worked at when i was in high school the one that taught me how to weld and cut um it was pretty cool place to work anyway all right first kings chapter four <coughs> verse one says it came to be that king solomon was sovereign or king over all israel and these were his chief officials azariahu son of zadok the priest Elihaporth and Ayehu, son of Shisha, the scribes were Jehoshaphat, son of Ahilud, the recorder, Benyehu, son of Yehoda, over the army, and Zadok and Abiathar, the priests, Azariahu, son of Nathan, over the officers, and Zebud, son of Nathan, a priest, friend of the king, and Asher, over the household, and Adinaram, and Abda, over the compulsory labor. And Solomon had 12 governors over all Israel who provided food for the king and his household. Each one made provision for one new moon of the year. And these were their names, Ben-Hur in the mountains of Ephraim, ben Dakur in Makats, and Shaul Bim, and Beth Shemesh, and Elon, and Baeth Hanan. All right, now pause for a minute. When we see the word Ben, Ben is um, son of. That would be um, kind of like the last name that we carry today in the Western, the Western culture. Um, when you see the word Ben, son of. Verse 10. Ben has said in Arubath, Soko and all the land of Hefer were his. Ben Ha Abed Abinadab, all of the height of Dor. Tapeth, the daughter of Solomon, because his wife. Baana, son of Ahiliad, and Tanakh, and Megiddo, and all Beth Shemim, which is beside Serethim, below Yisrael, from Beth Shem to Abel Meholah, as far as the other side of Yekoanam, Ben Gaber, and Ramoth Gilead. Now Ramoth is where um, Samuel came from. Gilead, the towns of Yair, son of Manasseh, 
and Gilead were his, the portion of Argob and Bashan. Sixty large cities with walls and bronze gate bars were his. Now I know that uh, reading these names are, are monotonous and boring. And some of them um, come to recollection to us and we, we kind of know some of them. It's important to read them because as we go through, as you go through scriptures, whether past or present, um, future, um, it will come into play sooner or later for you. And so I, I get frustrated reading them because they are hard to pronounce and I don't spend a whole lot of time on making sure I pronounce it exactly right when I'm reading it. Um, it'll come to you and it just kind of I don't know there there is a spiritual aspect in reading these names um, without just kind of skimming over them and skipping over them verse 14 Ahinadab son of Edo and Mahanaim Ahimatz and Naphtali he also took Bashemath the daughter of Solomon as wife Bahana son of Hushai and Asher, and in Aloth, Jehoshaphat, son of Harua, and Yeshakar, Yeshakar, sorry, <laughs> Yeshakar, Yeshakar, Shemai, son of Elah, and Benjamin, Geber, son of Uri, in the land of Gilead, in the land of Sihon, sovereign of the Amorites, and of Og, sovereign of Bashan, and one governor was in the land. Og, I believe, was the was one of the giants that David fought. <laughs> Yehuda, verse twenty. Yehuda and Israel were as numerous as the sand by the sea, in eating and drinking and rejoicing. And Solomon was ruling over all the reigns from the river to the land of the Philistines, as far as the border of Mitzrayim. They did task work and served Solomon all the days of his life. And Solomon's food supply for one day was 30 cores of fine flour and 60 cores of meal, 10 fatted cattle and 20 cattle from the pastures and 100 sheep besides deer and gazelles and roebucks and fatted, owl, fatted fowl. Solomon's food supply for one day was this. That would be for him to feed all of the, the armies, the... His, his council, um, his cabinet, um, his family, um, those close to him is what that would be. Because, I mean, 10 fatted cattle, that's that's a lot of meat. I had one cow, I had one cow butchered back in September last year, and it filled up two freezers. Um, we're still eating on that. Um, and so 10 fatted cattle, that would have to be for his entire, those he is responsible for taking care of. Verse 24, for he was ruling over all on this side from the river of Tipasa even to Asa over all the kings on this side of the river. And he had peace on all the sides round about him. And Yehuda and Israel dwelt safely. Now, Yehuda and Israel, that's, that's both kingdoms. That's the house of Judah and the house of Israel. The house of Judah is Judah and Benjamin. The house of Israel is the other 10 northern tribes. Each man under his vine and his fig tree, from Dan as far as Beersheba, all the days of Solomon. And Solomon had 40,000 stalls, 40, stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. That's a pretty good sized army. You don't realize how much food one individual consumes until you put them all together and they start consuming it together. Like our feast days, when we when we do our, our Sukkot at, towards the end of the year, um, which last year I think there was nine of us. It took a great amount of food for those eight days to feed all those individuals. Water and, and uh, just supplies. It takes a lot to feed um, people. <coughs> So he had, and he had 40,000 stalls of horses for his chariots and 12,000 horsemen. That's, that's a pretty good sized army. And these governors, each one in his new moon, provided the king, 
provided food for the king Solomon for all who came to the table of the king Solomon. And there was no lack in their supply, and they also brought barley, barley and straw to the appointed place for the horses and steeds, each one according to his right ruling. Elohim gave Solomon exceeding great wisdom and understanding and largeness of heart, like the sand of the seashore. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the men of the east and all the wisdom of Mitzrayim. For he was wiser than all the men, than Ethan and the Ezrahite, and Heman and Calco and Darda, the sons of Mahol. And his name was in all the nations round about. He was highly spoke of from here to there. Be like, um, it'd be like our President Trump today. Um, everybody knew President Trump in all nations. And he spoke 3,000 proverbs, and his songs were 1,005. And he spoke of trees from the cedar tree of Lebanon, even to the hyssop that springs out of the wall. And he spoke of beasts and of birds and of creeping creatures and fish. And there came from all peoples, from all the kings of the earth, who had heard of his wisdom to hear the wisdom of Solomon. That's why we read whenever it says that uh, when Jesus says that in all of Solomon's array um, well shoot I lost it never mind um, what was that that's going to drive me crazy I'll have to go look it up here in a little bit King Solomon had all the riches I mean he made, he made Donald Trump actually look like a chump look like a broke poor peasant compared to his riches and wealth and authority his wisdom and his knowledge um, it was uncomparable to anyone I'm going to let that be the video um, we're going to go ahead and break this up we'll do two videos here because um, there's quite a bit and um, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and so this being already 12 minutes we'll break it up um, I will um, start looking at how we can do this a little more efficiently as we go forth. Um, I appreciate those of, of you who, who diligently watch these videos and I bless the most high that you get something out of it, um, whether it inspire you or frustrate you or encourage you or whatever the case may be, um, to go and read this Bible for yourself. And that's all I'm pushing for is go read it for yourself. Um, you won't come away empty, I promise. I'll be blessed, be encouraged, and always be frustrated. So, Phil Disciple will get you on the next video.